Mm-hmm. And that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Would anyone else care to share their fondest memory of last school year? Or if you've got a popping memory of this school year, then hey, this year is definitely something that's been miserable. Memorable. <laughs> I almost said something else. Well, I'll go. This is Donna Melhouse, and um, I'm the grass representative this year, and the previous years I've been at Thomas Dell High School, and what my fondest memories is being able to give away thousands of uh, dollars in scholarships to um, over 30 students, so um, it was um, one of the highlights for me to uh, leave Thomas Dell and now come join Colonial Beach. Well, isn't that just wonderful? And we, <laughs> and we thank you. We welcome you to the Drifter family. Aw, thank Every, you. Everything you do is going to be very instrumental in our students succeeding. So without further ado, the time is 6.36. I'm going to jump right into our evening. That way we have the allotted time set aside for everybody and we get all the content we need. Because you all know if you're on this call and you've been in Colonial Beach High School last year, you know I can talk for days. <laughs> so good evening one and all. My name is Darlene Fonville. I am the school counselor at Colonial Beach High School and I am your hostess with the mostest for this evening. Mm -hmm. It is my second year at Colonial Beach High School. I received my education at Norfolk State University in Norfolk, Virginia, class of 2014 and 2018. So awesome. Not too long ago. I'm originally from Wilmington, Delaware. So, you know, the northern part of the East Coast is something I'm familiar to. And learning about the northern neck has just been a really awesome opportunity. Um, me and Principal Williams attended the same university and we're also a part of the same sorority, Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. And she is who introduced me to this position and I couldn't have been more honored or excited to start something, a, a whole new adventure. So with us, with us this evening, we're going to have information from all different types of topics, starting with, you know, high school expectations. How do I even set an appointment with you, Ms. Bonville? Uh, learning about your different course offerings, uh, ac academic opportunities such as governor school, and we have a governor school student on here. I keep picking on her. That's Bella Jones. Mm -hmm. And we have post-graduation plans. What is it that you want to do? Do you want to be employed? Do you want to enlist? Or do you want to enroll? You can do all three. Little did you know. Uh, so we're going to be talking about all of those things. With us this evening, we have Ms. Donna Milhouse. As she said, she is our new GRASP advisor, meeting with students in SOAR, uh, the SOAR program, and also our graduating seniors. Also joining us is going to be Mr. Todd Davis from the Northern Neck Technical Center. Um, he uh, houses, that building houses all of the different trade and certification programs. Then we will have uh, Mr. Hutt Williams also presenting on Rappahannock Community College dual and dual enrollment. Uh, lastly, we will wrap up with Mrs. Karen Camlin from our Chesapeake Bay uh, Governor's School. We're going to take some pauses and some breaks for some Q&A, and we have a couple of specific concerns that were text to the 757 number. Should you have any new questions or inquiries, feel free to text that number and I'll be able to um, you know, answer them before our time runs out. Get out of here. And I'm gonna begin. Hey, all you beautiful people. Oh, you cool cats and kittens. Don't tell Carol Baskin I said her line. But um, yes, uh, I wanted to start this evening off with sharing just some basics. Uh, there might be an eighth grade parent on here. There might be a transfer parent on here. And there are certain things that you might not know. And that's all good. So, you know, just to start off at the beginning, we have the high school website. I want to show you guys. 
share my screen. I want to show you guys the the up the facelift that my website went under. All right. I'm on internet. Be my friend. All right, great. Can you guys see this screen? Yes. Fantastic. So when you're at the school website and you want to figure out how to communicate with Mrs. Fonville, that's me, you would go to four students. Or no, excuse me, you would go to staff directory, high school staff directory. From the high school staff directory, you'll scroll and you'll see my name, Mrs. Fonville. Here we have updates. See, we're currently in Drifter Pride Virtual Spirit Week. Uh, tomorrow, I can't wait to see you guys' Throwback Thursday posts, just to just bring back all the good feels, the warm fuzzies. If you're yearning for, you know, a visual of the building and you just miss the classroom and the hallways, click this computer and it'll take you to the virtual Colonial Beach High School tour on YouTube. Uh, another brief history about me and how to contact me, my, my office phone number and extension. When you do call this number, you can type in the extension or you can press option three. Clicking around, the calendar is being updated. But this is my favorite tab, the students tab. Because in the students tab, that's the meat. That's what you need. If you're interested in college and career prep, these are the contact email addresses and schools that were just on our virtual college tour. It was towards the end of September throughout the midway of this month. And we had a lot of great presentations and door prizes. VA Wizard is a wonderful tool where you build a profile and it helps you to do different different um, surveys and questionnaires to figure out more about who you are. You can also gain some helpful interview tips. So this one addresses um, how to build your resume, how to prepare for a job or your career. CapEx website is a wonderful resource for scholarships. Nobody wants to pay money for school. If you don't have to, why not go for free? So, you know, take advantage of all of the different scholarship opportunities there. The FAFSA website is something we're going to talk about a little bit later in the evening uh, with, Ms., with Mrs. Millhouse. And then also the Big Future website talks about different college resources. GRASP is located here. It just explains um, what GRASP is about and how the program works, the organization works. Testing. For those that are interested in college, you may or may not have to take the SAT exam. We are holding SAT school day in the spring, um, fingers crossed, in the month of March. It feels like it's tomorrow. Uh, so stay tuned for those updates. Uh, if you are interested in taking the SAT at, on your own at a local testing center, you can just email me and request a fee waiver and we'll take care of you. Um, the ASVAB is for those that are interested in military enlistment. Opportunities. Here's where you'll see a few different scholarship opportunities and also um, community service opportunities. As they come up, they'll either be posted here or they're e usually emailed out or posted on Facebook. Useful links. So these are some helpful links if you're experiencing these specific things. If you want to, you know, ease some test or assignment anxiety, you can do that. There are different videos uh, for meditation, yoga for teens, study music, and self-care tips. It's very easy to just forget the little things and then all of a sudden you're, you're razzled and you're tired and all of that. So to prevent that, you know, check out those resources. Uh, lastly, there's another link here that helps you get to the CapEx website, Federal Student Aid website, and also scholarships.com. 
All right. So lately I have been meeting with students one-on-one. -on -one. And the reason I have done that is so that we can discuss what your goals and your interests are, um, you know, talk about what your academic path might be, uh, your future plans and uh, the different testing grades and attendance you might have going on. Testing, when I'm talking about that, I'm referring to standards of learning, SOL testing. So with SOLs, you know, certain, you're, depending on your diploma type, you might have to um, take a different amount of SOLs, it, it, you know. So with that, that's what we'll discuss. I'm going to um, pull up a diploma audit and go through that and um, take some, I want to pause just to take a few questions while I'm bringing that up. So if you have a question, feel free to speak it out now while I pull up the diploma audit. Ms. Fondo, I know that you were talking about the SAT, but is there anything about the ACTs? Oh, ACTs. ACTs are geared towards, uh -huh, okay, are geared towards, you know, STEM, science, math, technology. And if you are interested in taking that, I can, you know, I can prepare you with the waiver for that and the study material. So it depends on what school you're interested in. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Actually, the um, all schools actually take the SAT or the uh, uh, or the SAT or the ACT, and 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 they test you differently. And so, I when I was a school counselor, I always recommended that students take both at least once because of how they test a student, and then um, then take the one of them a second time to prove the scores. You know, based on what they feel like they can do better on. Because the, S, the ACT includes a science component and it's kind of like sitting in class all week and then taking a test on Friday based on what you learn. And the SAT is more concept based. So really it depends on how the student learns the best. And all schools in Virginia take both. And so I think, uh, I always recommend students taking both of them at least once just to see how they do on it. That's just my two cents. That's what I'm looking to do, Mr. Williams. How would you know it was me? <laughs> <laughs> the name or the voice? Yes, I agree with that. Um, my experience has been the ACT seemed to be, um, the students seem to like a little better because it is content based. Um, and also I've heard recently the SATs um, are also going to be uh, more content based as well in the most recent ones. Um, so they're becoming more aligned in um, what they're expecting. But I think to give you an overview of all of your skills, I think the ACT is probably a really good one to take. And most kids just take the SATs from my experience. Awesome. So thank you both for that feedback. We have another question. It says, what grade do you recommend that students get ready for the SA ACT and SAT? Thank you for that question. You can get started or, you know, start reviewing it as early as you'd like. But taking the actual test, it's recommended to start taking the PSAT, which is the pre-SAT. You can start taking that as early as your um, 10th grade year at Colonial Beach High School. And the ACT is available to juniors and seniors. Okay. All right, so I'm going to briefly go over the diploma audit that some may or may not have seen yet. So here is the diploma audit. 
A diploma audit is a document that is shared with the school counselor, the student, and the parent. It's a checkoff list, it's a navigation or a, a map, just so you can see this, the classes you've taken, classes you're currently taking, and the ones you'll take in the spring semester. So here I locate, the, I place the key to different classes. So if you see yellow, that means you're, you're in that class. Green means you'll be taking it the next semester. And orange is a student choice. So throughout the years, you'll see that certain colors might, certain squares or rectangles might be orange. That's indicating you have a choice. Um, so for example, if this, um, if this square were orange, uh, it might have a choice of bio two or forensics, forensic science. Okay, so that's just an example. And it would look like, because if you're anything like me, I'm a visual learner, so there's your visual. Also, if it's a virtual Virginia or Odyssey Wear course, it'll be in blue. Because this is an eighth grader, they're not gonna see an Odyssey Wear course specifically until their junior or junior year or senior year. So here you have the A. The A stands for advanced and the S stands for standard. That would be placed here. Those are the different diploma types. So the difference between the two is based on the ambition of the student. All students in high school are required to achieve three math classes, three science, three science classes, three history classes, um, two gym classes, and two uh, sub sequential electives. Those sequential electives means you take art one, that means you gotta take art two. One comes after the other. Your sequential electives don't always have to be in fine arts. It can either be your, your foreign language, like Spanish one and two, or it can be if you attend the Votech Center, for example, um, taking cosmetology one and cosmetology two. The grade levels are separated by a different color. If you were to pursue an advanced diploma, you would have to achieve three full years in a foreign language. At Colonial Beach High School, we offer Spanish one, two, and three. Our American Sign Language course is offered through what's called Virtual Virginia and also along with French 1 and 2. When it comes to English, everybody, no matter standard or advanced, you have to achieve four English classes, starting off with English 9 on up. There are, there are seldom eighth grade students that have more than one credit bearing class. A credit bearing class, it means that it bears one credit and those credits total up here at the bottom. So for example, if this student were an eighth grader taking algebra one, world history one, one two, three, four, five, eighth grade art and oh no math eight prep math eight prep the only classes that bear a credit would be world history one and algebra one so that means by the end of this year passing all those classes that student would have two credits the total amount for standard credits is 22 and advanced is 26. Then the last thing I want to talk about, well, excuse me, the second to last thing I want to talk about is the SOL requirements. So here is where the requirements are actually exactly the same. All students that entered high school after 2018-2019, um, are their requirements are the same for your SOL. These are your CTE credential exams. So classes like leadership development, uh, which is taught by our business teacher, Ms. 
um, Fernandez, you would take workplace readiness as the final exam in that class. If you were taking digital applications, you would take the exam from Microsoft Office Suite. The paraprofessional exam goes along with Virginia Teachers for Tomorrow. And the WISE test is something that everyone takes because all students are required to take economics and personal finance. The WISE financial literacy exam goes along with that. Here you'll see that um, once it's completed, say the student's a senior and they're finished all their SOLs, this would be bolded. They completed advanced health and got their CPR, that would be bolded. Um, computer solutions counts as a virtual class. Um, and then the sequential electives, as I mentioned, would be bolded as well. Here you indicate if you are interested in um, college, what that college might be, you know, just to name a few. And um, here is your career interest, just to help us keep involved in what your personal goals are moving forward. Um, these are the different tests. ASVAB is for military, ACT, SAT, and PSAT. Any questions so far about the diploma audit? All right, silence means keep going. All right, <laughs> I'm with it. Um, I'm going to um, touch on the counseling calendar. So I know it's, of course, completely different from last school year, but around this time of the year, I'm meeting with students individually. Uh, small groups are set to, to start right after the Thanksgiving holiday. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Um, Different topics that I'm offering are grief and loss. If you are wanting to make some new friends, we'll have a group for making new friends. Um, and that's to keep it gender specific. We have golden girls for our females and we have PD pals for the males. Um, if you're someone that has experienced bullying and you wanna be an advocate for bullying prevention, we have control the narrative as another group. So those will be coming up in, um, the end of next month. Also in the spring, that's when we start doing those different tests. Uh, we have the SAT, the ACT, we have the ASVAB all um, available in the month of March. Um, and throughout the year, there's different monthly awareness. As you all know, I'm really big on personal health. So there's a health initiative pretty much every month. So, you know, look forward to those things. Last year, we participated in being grateful. What are you thankful for? Just some, a nice way to connect. So look for something like that on a virtual platform. Uh, we have the toy drive and we have found out hunger. Those are community service opportunities that will be coming up. To highlight and discuss and share more information about community service, students should have received or seen notice that our community service hours have changed. Uh, seniors are only required 20 hours and juniors are required 15. Sophomores can begin collecting hours up to a half, so up to seven, their sophomore year will count towards their junior year. You can participate in organizations like American Cancer Society, St. Jude, um, American Red Cross. They have all the options and resources that they seek on their websites. If you are someone that doesn't want to participate with those organizations and you want to do something of your own, there is a writing rubric, um, a writing prompt option for you to read create a community service project and present it before town hall. So that is something that can be discussed on an individual basis, but it is basically a research paper. Um, what else did I want to talk about? The learning platforms that we have. So students are learning on Canvas, Odysseyware, Virtual Virginia, we have HMH, we have IXL, so many different letters and numbers and all of that. I applaud everyone on this call because you are making it happen. You're supporting your student. If you're the student on the call, you're doing it. You're doing a great job. So I'm all about encouraging the student, praising the student and recognizing the student. And I wanna you know, take this brief moment to commend everyone 
for, you know, being resilient, doing the best that you can to make every million Zoom session, um, turn in the, the different assignments that you guys have, learning the different platforms, like I said, that are available. We're understanding how to download a PDF. We're learning how to share our screen and attach and a document to an email. So some of you might be learning that for the first time. Um, so I just want to take this moment to applaud you and commend you. <laughs> All right. Uh, next, I want to talk about honor society, uh, honors classes and National Honor Society. Miss Veronica Reynolds is the National Honor Society sponsor. All questions can be deferred to her and I'll place her email in the chat if you have a question about that. But honors classes um, are available in honors English 9 and 10. It's available in our science classes like environmental science, biology, biology two, um, and forensic science. Um, honors classes are available in algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and advanced math slash trigonometry. Honors classes are available in world history one, world history two, USDA history, and government. Um, so those are some of our opportunities for your GPA to weigh or be calculated differently. Um, if you are someone that, if you have a student that is a high achiever, push them towards the honors classes. Uh, you know, support is given to every student, um, especially when they, when they ask for it. Um, speaking of support, I noticed that a lot of students feel like afraid to email me they're like sorry to bother you you guys are not bothering me at all it's literally the job i signed up for so don't even fret it um you know do be respectful of time um bless these kids they have been up some of them are sending emails at like one o'clock in the morning and i'm like go to bed so you know Definitely that reminder for some students to be res respectful of time. Uh, teachers and staff will see their email first thing, but you know it just makes a little bit more sense and it's a little bit more quick pro professional tip for our, our babies to email us between eight and five. It'll, they'll definitely get a quicker response that way too, most of the time. Um, I'm going to touch on advanced placement. This is all still in our course offerings topic. Advanced placement is for the student that wants to really get ahead of the game. Uh, these are classes that students can take and earn a college credit while in high school. Um, they do come with a financial obligation. Excuse me. And so far, our testing, our test takers are only responsible for $33 per exam. So those details will be sent out to some of the students that are our AP students. Um, we offer AP classes within um, uh, U.S. history and um, English 11 and English 12. I had a moment there uh so you know those things those classes um, are currently what our students are interested in and flocking to but there's room you know depending on the type of staff see our staff also has to be you know certified or if we reach out and use the virtual virginia instructors we can offer it there so that's a little bit of how that works before i move into our next topic are there any questions I like the silence, so I'm going to keep going. <laughs> so I'm going to open this to our next speaker, and that is Mr. Hutt Williams. He's going to share with us how to obtain an associate's degree in high school and um, our dual enrollment courses. So at this time, take it away, Hutt. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. Um, you know, uh, some students, and I'm glad Bella's here because she not only can talk about her 
experience with the governor's school, but also she is a student that is earning her degree while in high school. But since um, I'm not sure what the audience is here, um, I got a couple, couple different um, things that I've been asked to talk about. So let me start with the dual enrollment program. Um, I work in the dual enrollment office at um, at Rappahan Community College, uh, so that's one of the hats that I wear, and um, and there is a process. So I don't want to take up tonight to talk about technically about the process um, because um, you can work with um, Mrs. Fonville, and also I see on the call is Mrs. Abel, and Mrs. Abel is our site supervisor, the RCC site supervisor at King George High School, and. Um, uh, she's an RCC employee, and she is also having her position sort of redesigned so she will not only be just the um, site supervisor, but she is going to provide some coaching services. Um, so if you're not familiar with career coaches, um, you know, they are um, – so when I was – back when I was a school counselor, we had – we have 14 – high schools in our in our region that runs from King George to Gloucester to New Kent and, and back when I was a school counselor we had enough coaches to cover all of those and then the funding dried up and we when I was hired and, and I and one of the hats I wear as a supervisor of those career coaches uh, which we're now called high school navigators um, uh, we got down to just two part-time and that we're slowly uh, putting um, those back um, Oh, we're getting a screen share. So we're slowly getting those back, and I'm excited that um, um, that Terry is going to uh, fill that role to some degree at Colonial Beach and King George beyond what she already does. Um, so, you know, I want Terry to wear multiple hats like me, so we're going to give her lots to do. Mm -hmm. But um, but once it comes sort of official, she'll be working closely with the grass counselor should be working closely with Ms. Fonville. And um, so since she is a RCC employee, doesn't mean she only works with the students that are bound for RCC, but because the hours are going to be so limited, that is going to be her focus. Um, the dual enrollment, which I'll talk about in a minute, because something exciting is happening there, but helping me with the dual enrollment piece, getting the school, uh, the students uh, applied to RCC, getting their placement straight, because we do have a placement test, or whether they're using an alternate test, uh, some kind of alternate um, placement score, and so she'll be helping me with that. Um, but those seniors that are definitely bound for RCC, she would definitely be working with those seniors. Um, and along along with that, our college advisors, um, which are now college navigators, we're, we're in the very near future are going to have six of those or will soon have six of those. And we're going to, so when we're fully staffed, we're also going to assign those uh, college uh, navigators to a high school. Um, you know, that won't be their job in life of course they will still be on campus uh, when we're back on campus advising adult students those that have graduated but the point being is that Ms. Abel and myself would have a smooth um, handoff um, of the Colonial Beach seniors that are bound for RCC to a college navigator that um, the students and Ms. Fonville would be very familiar with so like when we're back in school and and she wanted a lunchtime visit and say terry wasn't available Ms. Abel wasn't available then you know then she would have a college uh navigator she can reach out to the one that's been assigned to the school um and that's really about the seniors which i'll talk about in a minute so back on the dual enrollment piece it's really exciting um this year colonia beach has hired um an um, government teacher and an English teacher that is going to be able to teach dual enrollment courses next year. So that's really exciting. Um, it's been a few years since Colonial Beach has had um, some dual enrollment since the, the um, business teacher left. And uh, so we're really excited about that. Um, so when students are making their schedules for next year, so we had um, a rising senior on the call tonight, um, on the Zoom tonight, um, you want to make sure that you uh, sign up for the dual enrollment government if you haven't already taken it, because that's going to be six credits that you're going to be able to get, PLS 135, 136. 
and the dual Roman English, which is also for the seniors, maybe for the juniors. We haven't really solidified that yet. So, um, so that's really exciting. And you want to tell all your friends, cause I know there's more students at Columbia beach that are not on this call. So, um, so that's really exciting that, um, we're finally not only getting dual enrollment back, but we're also getting transferred dual enrollment back. And, uh, so make sure that you work through Mrs. Fonville, uh, eventually through Ms. Abel and myself. And, um, so we can really, um, make this a, uh, make this a go next year. Um, because obviously we have to have students to, to make it a go. So, so we're really excited about that. But there are other dual enrollment opportunities, which you're going to hear about tonight. Um, the Northern Neck Technical Center, there's two programs. You'll hear about all their programs here in a minute. But two of the programs, the nurse aid and the culinary, are dual enrollment. And you actually end up with a certificate from RCC. You actually are eligible to graduate from RCC, participate in RCC's graduation. Um, so that's pretty cool. And, um, and so you end up with certifications and actual certificate. And then the governor school, which you're going to hear about tonight as well. Um, you also get a ton of dual enrollment credits, you know, close to 60 credits. Unfortunately, you don't end up with associate degree unless you take some other classes, but, um, but you, um, will, will end up with a certificate called STEM at work. So if you're, in ninth grade and thinking about applying next year uh applying this year i guess uh because it starts in the 10th grade um then um you will be earning a certificate called stem at work now some students like bella uh and others uh at colonial beach and other schools do actually earn uh, a social degree uh the full social degree while in high school and i i would still be the advisor for that um even with Ms. Abel at the, at the school, uh, she'll be working basically with all the other students that may not be on a degree and certificate path. And then I, um, and that doesn't, you know, we're not so territorial where Ms. Abel's in the building that just that, you know, you're not allowed to talk to her just because I would be your advisor if you're working on your degree. But, but, but technically I would be assigned to you as your advisor and I would be the one that would be making sure that you're on track for that grad, for that degree or certificate. Um, and meeting with you on a regular basis. And the governor's school does help with that a lot, which um, hopefully um, Bella will talk to in a few minutes because of all the dual enrollment credits. You do have to, um, there are some schools that have a lot of dual enrollment and there are some schools that don't have hardly any, but regardless, um, the whole degree cannot be totally earned in the high school. So there's always going to be um, something you'll have to take outside the high school. And so, um, if, if there are students that are interested in that, um, that have not expressed interest yet and want to set up a meet with me, I will set up a meeting and kind of go over all the requirements. And, um, so then you can make an educated decision if that's, that's the route you want to go because it, it is a commitment, but I always tell students, I want them to be a high school student first, um, because they can't go back and do that. So, um, they can always get their you know, their degree, although I wouldn't wait too long to do that either, but you don't have to do it in high school. Uh, but it is, it is a perfect um, option for some students. Um, we have about 50 a year. So, um, but it does take a commitment because, you know, if, you, if, again, we're talking about when we're not in COVID, but, um, you know, if you're playing sports and, and you're involved in um, other curricular, extracurricular activities, it does take, um, it, it does take um, a time commitment initiative, you know, good time management skills. So, um, so anyway, if you're interested in that, um, just let Ms. Fonville know or reach out to me directly. And by the way, I was going to share a PowerPoint, but because I live in the boonies and uh, on the Verizon MiFi, um, I, that's why my video has been off. I just cut it on for this presentation but it's really hard for me to do any sharing, any video. Um, so, and Ms. 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 Abel might be at the King George site, but she knows what I'm talk <laughs> talking about because she has the same challenge where, where she is too, but um, where she lives. But um, so, um, which may be good because sometimes when you're, when you have a PowerPoint, it slows, slows it down a little bit and I don't want to take too much of your time. So, so, just kind of recap there's different pieces here so there's a dual enrollment which means you get high school and dual enrollment credit so if you go do the nurse aid or the culinary at 
um, Northern the neck tech, you will get, you'll get both high school and college credits. If you take the English or the government next year, that's coming on board that we're excited about, you'll get high school and college credit. Um, same with the governor school, you'll get high school and college credit. So that's what dual enrollment means. Now, if you take a course outside of high school at the full tuition rate, it's technically not dual enrollment. Um, it's just um, concurrent enrollment, which basically means you're taking it at the same time that you're in high school. When, because I don't want anybody to get confused because dual enrollment, when we have a contract with the school division, it is a reduced tuition. So like next year, I don't know if the school division pays for it or if the student pays for it, but next year, the English and government would be $15 a credit because it's taught in the high school by high school teacher. Um, if you took the same courses outside of high school, which a lot of students have been doing um, because they haven't had dual enrollment, it's 160 65 per credit or about $481.95 per class. Um, now, the concurrent enrollment classes, the ones that are taken outside of RCC at the full tuition, can sort of become dual enrollment because Colonia Beach is one of those schools that have allowed students to satisfy some of their high school requirements um, by taking classes at RCC. And again, the good news is, um, again, we're not in COVID because right now RCC is um, fully online or f online through Zoom like this, um, this fall and this spring. But we do have the site, which again is a, well, is a site supervisor, which is kind of nice because you get to know her as a student during the day. And um, if you want to take an in-person course, um, we have uh, classes and the sites open from four to nine, Monday through Thursday, and you're not that far away from King George High School. That's where the site is. And um, so you kind of get um, double the benefit by having Ms. Abel uh, focus on um, the students there at um, Colonia Beach. So the last thing is the scholarship was open. Um, again, the grass counselor uh, will be working with the students um, that are planning to come to RCC as well as Ms. Abel. But the scholarship is open. It closes uh, February 19th, but the, but the sooner um, the better. And this is what I tell seniors, this is what I tell students. Um, because after the 19th, and if your plans change, you can't go back and do it. If you fill out the scholarship, it does not commit you to come to RCC. Um, so it's not like a regular college where you apply and you have and, and and you get accepted and you have to say I want to come and commit all that. So we, you know we take everybody, even if you have a GED. So it's fine. So but I want students to apply because you can always turn it down if you end up not coming versus trying to apply later. It's the same with the FAFSA. The FAFSA opened October 1st, and I know it's going to be talked about later, but it's the same with the FAFSA. You always want to put your community college, which is Rappahannock right Community College, down as one of the 10 schools in case your plans change. It's easier for us to have your information up front than it is after the fact. Um, and that is for the seniors, the scholarship and the FAFSA. Uh, unfortunately, right now, there is no financial assistance for high school students taking a full tuition course in high school unless you have a College 529 plan, um, which Bella did have, for example. So that was kind of nice. But if you don't have one, then unfortunately, the FAFSA, the Pell Grant, um, doesn't pay for it courses while you're still in high school, okay? Um, and also keep in mind if you anyone decides to try to get a degree while in high school, um, it really is to save money and to, for whatever reason, kind of finish your bachelor's degree a little bit sooner or to double major or if you're planning on being a doctor, just to get into that finish line a little bit faster. But it is not designed for you to become a transfer student and buy pass the SAT that we talked about earlier or bypass recommendation letters. If you get your social degree while in high school, you still have to apply as a first year student. You still have to take the SATs. You still have to get recommendation letters and the whole nine yards. So it's not designed to bypass any of those requirements. Um, it's just designed for you to, to have something more challenging in high school to save a little money. Um, and um, you know, and again, it's it's what my boss calls found time. It, it allows you to find some time to to 
either finish in two years at a four-year school or to slow it down a little bit or to double major because now you got this failing time by finishing a lot of these courses or the whole degree in high school. Um, so that's pretty much it. I've talked about the dual enrollment, the coaching piece, um, the seniors coming to RCC. Um, if there are seniors planning to come to RCC, we will be meeting with you probably virtually to set up your classes sometime in the spring um, when, the, when the fall schedule comes out, um, probably by the end of March, 1st of April. So we'll be working with Ms. Fonville on that. Um, Ms. Fonville, do you think I covered everything? I probably went over my time, so. Oh, no, you did not go over time at all. And I think you covered everything. Ms. Abel, do you have anything you'd like to add or share? have to find all my buttons. No, I think you pretty well covered it. So, yeah. Oh, there's Ms. Abel. There you Yay. go. I want everybody to see who she is. So that's going to be your all's new coach or yeah, navigator. So. Look forward to working on that. So, yep. yep. I think right. you got it all covered. All right. Thank you, Ms. Fonville. Awesome. Thank you so much. Before we go into our next piece, are there any questions? Any questions about RCC? Any questions about the school counseling office, uh, community service? We covered graduation requirements. There was a lot. So I want to just take a quick pause for any questions. I have one question. Yes, ma'am. Um, in regards to the, the governor's school program, um, do can anyone apply for that or do, do, do the students have to be selected to participate in that? So I'm going to definitely cover the information about governor's school, but yes, any, any student can apply. The application process begins during your sophomore year. So you're, if you have- Fresh, a, Freshman year, freshman year. I'm sorry, sorry, yes. I'm thinking of Tech Center. Your application process starts your freshman year. So if you have an eighth grade student or um, a ninth grade student, it's important that we're looking at what classes they're currently in. If you have an eighth grade student, it's important that we make sure they take some helpful classes their ninth grade year to gear them for that. Okay. And is is there like a particular type student that you would recommend? Like, is it like someone who's who's planning on like going to college to do more in like the science and math field or? So, so yes, just to give you a quick information about that, the mission of the Chesapeake, um, I'm actually going to talk about it now since you've asked. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. No, you're no, 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 you're fine. Um, and I also wanted to announce that our speaker, um, Ms. Karen Campbell, is not able to attend because there is a school board meeting going on right now. Yes, I was, I was pretty bold, <laughs> but um, she, yeah, she's unable to attend. So I'm going to highlight um, the information that I have on Governor's School. And if Bella is open to it if, and wants to give a quick testimonial, she can definitely do that because she is on the call this evening you know not even by chance I wasn't even expecting her so I'm so happy uh, so the mission of the governor's school Chesapeake Bay governor's school is for marine and environmental science it provides a community of learners with the opportunity to explore connections among the environmental math science and technology and develops leaders who possess the research and technical skills, global perspective, and vision needed to address the challenges of a rapidly changing society. So it's for the student that is interested in climate, the student that's interested in sustainability, the environment, things of that nature. Would you happen to have a student that's interested in any of the any of those things? No, I don't. I don't think that's the route she wants to take. 
Okay. <laughs> so I just, I didn't know if they offered like any other type class. No, and, and that's fine. So yeah, we want to definitely have, you know, focused paths for the students that, you know, are specific in what they want to learn about and what they want to do after high, after high school. So dep what type of child do you have? What are their interests? She's more into the humanities, arts, and, um, but then she's also kind of leaning towards, um, she's thinking physical therapy is something she might want to to get get into. Ms. Fonville, can I say something? Yes, one, one, one moment, Bella. So I'll be able to touch on that right after this segment. Go ahead, Bella. Um, I am not the biggest math and science student at all. My interest is in becoming a lawyer in the future, but um, Governor's School, it pr just provides a great opportunity to get into better colleges, and it provides a whole new learning experience that Colonial Beach might not offer. Um, I think that it's really awesome what they get to do, how we get to look and do a bunch of different things, including like issues that affect us politically as well as environmentally. And it's not just about the science and the math for me. It's just about how we connect to the world and develop our skills in um, school. Cool. Awesome. So yes, the curriculum guide is of uh, is going to be available. I thought it was, but it's going to be available on my website. And the curriculum guide is an extensive document that is that was drafted by the high school, and it explains the different classes that we offer. I mentioned um, all of our core classes. It touches on the electives we offer in house um, and some of the online classrooms. So this is just a quick overview. It may or may not be outdated as far as the math, because the math names did change. Um, but these are this is the curriculum of what that student would take. Um, so this is the type of student that you know, the governor school looked for, and they can be, the process requires, uh, it does require some teacher recommendation, um, and, you know, the, the grades, you've got to have the ambition academically before entering governor school, because the curriculum is more rigorous than the standard high school curriculum. Okay, so there's marine and environmental science, and there's also engineering. Okay, check here. Any more questions about Governor School? No one has entered the waiting room. All right, great. Um, Bella, did you want to share anything else about? governor school i wouldn't really know what to say i mean i can answer questions okay um so so i think she gave a really great perspective because you can be you could be any type of student wanting can you blow out the candle in my room please it's making me nervous <laughs> I'm talking to my niece, sorry. Uh, so yeah, it's for any student that is ambitious and does want a stronger transcript or a stronger GPA for college application. All right, I think I covered everything for Governor School. Oh, just to give some more information about Governor School, the, I guess the, the, the the specifics. Um, when we're in the building, students arrive to the school at 7 a.m. and they are transported to um, the they're transported to the governor's school for for their classes and they're there during the first half of the day and they have their core classes during the second half of the day. So when they're in the program, they're um, only taking two core classes a semester when a standard student would be taking four at the building. Okay, and that goes on from 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Uh, there is a senior project affiliated with Governor's School, um, and 
uh, very extensive. So I know Bella's looking forward to that next year. Uh, said I'll try to start on it in a couple months. All right, you better get ahead. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just one final question then. Oh, yes. So to actually complete the governor's school program part, they have to start it in the 10th grade? Yes, it is a three-year program. Okay. So, so, yeah, it's not something that you can jump into after 10th grade. You'd have to start then. And let me, if I can add, um, and one of the main reasons for that is a math sequence more than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, but also, um, as um, Ms. Fineville and Bella just alluded to, it's also their senior project that they present um, in March at VCU, which I don't know if that's what it's going to look like this year, but they do it the first weekend of March. And they actually presented at the Science Symposium with all the other governor schools there. And um, But the three years are leading up to that. And, and the stats class that you take junior year is very important for that senior project. So it sort of um, sort of builds on itself and, um, and it's kind of stackable. So the um, so so it's really kind of difficult for a student to come in the middle of it, um, you know, to, to versus starting at the at the beginning. Now the students do end up getting a transferable um, PE credit. Um, a lot of colleges want help for a PE credit. They do for because all they they do a whole lot of outdoor projects. And Bella can tell you about the 10th, 11th, and 12th grade because they start in the mountains and then, you know, the tributaries and then finally the ocean. And um, uh, and then at the end, they are also awarded a PE credit based on all those eight projects. So um, I just wanted to add that. Thank you so much for elaborating further on that, Mr. Williams. So next. Oh, yes. Um, there are some rare cases where students who enter governor's school sophomore year drop out. Like we have two new kids this year joining, joining junior year. It's just a lot harder. You have to right. catch up on all of the sophomore material. Got it. So if you want to work smarter and not harder, you can get in where you fit in your sophomore year. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to touch on next on how to achieve a trade certification. And I can actually speak from personal experience because in little old Delaware, I attended Del, Del Castle Technical High School. It prepared me for my career of choice, which at that time was nursing. So at the end of my junior year, yeah. At the end of my junior year, I was able to sit for the certified nursing assessment um, and I passed. So I was able to become a CNA at the tender age of 17 years old, make enough bread to pay for my own prom and graduation getaway. And it was a really great opportunity. Um, though my school was a technical center and not really focusing on college prep I was that random kid that was like I want to go to school and get out of Delaware so I was the student that sought out after my school counselor so if you have a student that is inquisitive please please encourage them to reach out to me and share more about themselves of course I'm doing my effort in reaching every student but it it helps them progress and advance that much further when they advocate for themselves and send a quick little harmless email to their favorite school counselor. Uh, <laughs> so yes, um, attending a technical school was great because I had a chance to, you know, learn something that could make me some money. Um, you know, not every student wants to go straight into college and achieving a trade certification can really help them uh, progress and become more independent. So this is the website for the Northern Neck Technical Center. It is located right in Warsaw and every day, last year, every day our students went. Um, they are on a rotating schedule like we are, so students can uh, attend in the building. Their building is open. Students can attend 
daily on their A or their B week and virtually the opposite week. Uh, transportation is available to them from, this, from the school division or they can drive themselves if they have their license. That is actually a new piece of transportation, you know, specific to the pandemic and the changes um, in the school policy. So here you'll see Northern Neck Technical Center and you can visit um, and learn more about certain programs if you have a student interested in um, the most popular one um, this past, like these current kids are in, the most popular one is uh, nursing, followed directly by culinary arts. Prior to this school year, we had a nice um, amount in cosmetology with culinary arts in second. Traditionally, Colonial Beach has sent two to three students in each program. So we try to appeal to every interest. Um, auto technology talks about the insides of the car where auto body um, handles collision and outer repair. Carpentry is for students that are interested in the, you know, the fundamentals of construction um, and um, husbandry, <laughs> I like that word. Cosmetology <laughs> is for the student that is interested in hair, makeup, and styling. Come and flip this wig, okay? Uh, com computer systems has networking and uh, troubleshooting. Um, programming, computer programming affiliated with it. Culinary arts is for students that want to work in any facets of food and beverage. Uh, electricity and wiring um, correlates with a student that wants to pursue, again, construction or architectural uh, design. We have the engineering program that I mentioned uh, before and horticulture and landscaping uh, for, you know, literally, you know, plant life. Uh, marine service technology, handling um, boating and those types of vehicles on the water. Nurse aid, becoming a CNA, certified nursing assistant. The GED program is also housed there for students that would like to take that route for education. So, so I, uh, I let me, can I add one thing? Can yes, I add sir. one thing? When I when I was talking about dual enrollment, that's not in that list, and I'm not sure why it's not in the list. But they also added game design this year, and that yes. is dual, and that is dual enrolled through RCC as well, and um, it's a four course certificate. And so when the students come out, um, they come out with a certificate with certification in game design. So that's brand mm -hmm. new this year. Um, so, and if anybody has any other questions, um, let me know. I am on the foundation board at the uh, tech center. So if you have any other questions about the tech center, just let me know. Uh, traditionally, we take the sophomore class on a trip with their sec first and second choice, trade choice um, in mind, and they're able to uh, see hands-on um, some of the different components of the different trade programs that they have there. So that is something we're hoping to do again, some kind of way, if it's virtual or in person, um, that'll be provided to our 10th graders in the spring. So I just wanted to zoom in on their vision and their mission for anyone that was interested in knowing. And the the counselor the counselor that I am in communications with, her name is Miss Jo Andrews. She and I talk often, especially when it comes to uh, application season, making sure students turn in everything they need on time. Um, also this staff there is Mr. Uh, Todd Davis and Mr. Gross. Have I missed anybody? What? I don't think so. No, no, you haven't. Not as far as administration. Yay. Awesome. Uh, so now um, I want to pause again. Are there any questions about the Northern Neck Technical Center or the Chesapeake Bay Governor's School? All right, you know, I like this audience, okay. Um, what was I? I was just about to say something. I forget. 
hopefully. Oh, yes, I did want to answer Ms. McInnes. Uh, so for the student that is interested in more of the fine arts or the, the liberal arts, their classes will be chosen. They'll have more um, lenient, I guess, open. They'll have more of an opportunity to, of choice in their junior and senior year when it comes to what's offered on Odyssey Wear or Virtual Virginia, because um, those learning platforms have your advanced placement art history. Um, Odyssey Wear has music appreciation and music theory. Um, their sequential electives can go as hard, high as Art 1, 2, or as high as Art 3. And we have Yearbook 1 and 2, where students can learn, you know, interviewing questions, uh, the different components of putting a yearbook together and publication. And if a student wants to learn about journalism, that's a great route to go into. And then we have theater, theater one and two helps students to uh, learn how to project, um, helps them with creativity as far as uh, a play, as plays are concerned, putting on a play. And you also have um, creative writing as an elective to help this to, you know, guide the student along a path like that. Okay. okay. Um, and, and those, good. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Absolutely. So your student will see, you know, specific classes like that on their diploma audit um, when they meet with me individually. Okay. All right. I want to turn it over to our anchor, Ms. Donna Millhouse. She is going to share with us um, lots of different stuff. She's going to talk to us about college prep. Uh, we're going to talk about the Common Application College Board, AFSA support and scholarships. We'll also talk, um, touch on um, you know, how to request your transcript and how to uh, request a letter of recommendation. So at this time, take it away. Okay. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, can you see me? Sorry. No, Ms. Millhouse, we can't see you. Okay. Now you can. I hope. Ms. Fonville, you're muted. Yeah, Ms. Millhouse, we can see you. Yeah, I was just shouting too. We can see you. <laughs> okay, great. Um, first of all, I want to say welcome. And I had a chance to meet uh, some of you. And I talked to Bella today. And I enjoyed that conversation very much. Um, I have been in counseling for over 40 years. And the last uh, 10 of them, I focused on financial aid. So um, our organization, if you're not familiar with it, um, is the Great Aspiration Scholarship Program. And we're in over 71 uh, schools in Virginia, and we help kids navigate all the financial stuff that goes between high school and college, whether it be trade school, community college, a four-year school because I know there's many financial aid officers in the colleges, that's great, but getting into the school and making the right choices for you is really, really important. And um, my goal is to help you get the best education for the least amount of debt. And so we uh, highly recommend you apply to a variety of schools, whether it be um, public or private, whether it be two year or four year, um, whether uh, so that you have many options to open to you and um, that you can get the best education. So um, I work individually with families. Um, I'm going to do a group meeting next week um, with the sophomores who are in what's called our SOAR program. And the SOAR program is connected um, with the uh, Virginia 529 program, and they can start earning money um, in their sophomore year, junior year, and senior year that goes towards colleges. So 
Um, we work mostly with seniors and I hope to meet with every senior this year individually um, on video, I guess. <laughs> I'm originally from uh, Chesterfield County in Richmond, Virginia, but uh, we work very closely with the families. I can meet once, twice, three times. It depends on the family's needs. And um, especially first time uh, students uh, that their families have not had um, to go through this process before. So um, <clears throat> my main thing <clears throat> is to save you money and to get you money. <clears throat> my um, cohort in Chesterfield County used to say that we had dollar bills flying behind us, but you know, we, we really don't have that, but we also can access many scholarships for you. Um, I have been on many scholarship committees throughout my years, and um, I can help you navigate that process. My biggest thing uh, to recommend to students is, uh, especially seniors, is the importance of priority deadlines, um, especially for strong students that a, a college has a application deadline. Um, but those application deadlines are more important um, if they're strong students to get their merit application deadlines because they can get um, resources um, from the college if they're a strong student if they apply early, as early sometimes as October 15th, November 1st to the colleges. So that means the junior year is really, really important. So I love to talk to the students in their junior year. Sometimes I'll talk to economics classes and talk to them about the whole financial aid process and how that works. Um, so I can do night programs with all of that. I support families strongly with the two plus two option for saving money going two years to the community college and uh, getting you know resources to help pay for a lot of that and saving money and then focus on the next two years at the four-year school and help them save for any graduate programs that they might. Um, I provide one-on-one -on -one assistance for completing the FAFSA. Um, we get on the screen and we can actually complete that. And everything that I do is 100% confidential. I don't uh, report to anybody with this information. There's also another application for financial aid. It's called the CSS Profile. And I can help that students fill out that because they're not just looking at last year's income of the family, they're looking at the last three years. So um, the previous year, the current year, and the future year estimate. So um, I've done all of those things and want to help uh, with that as well. Another big thing that I help with students is once they get all their award letters in their senior year, they're like, okay, what should I do? What does this all mean? And again, we're comparing apples to oranges. So we want to look at, again, the best school, the best education for the least amount of debt. Um, so we explain those to award letters. I work with admissions officers at colleges. Um, I work closely with a counselor to um, get fee waivers. And also I get referrals for students to talk to. Um, uh, the other thing is, um, we offer GRASP scholarships, and this is a big one. Uh, we have a last dollar scholarship um, that is for a four-year uh, student, and then we have a community partnership scholarship for kids who go the two plus two or the trade route. So um, I'm instrumental in helping get that recommendation. I sit on their committees. So I really wanna work with students to get those scholarships and have been um, pretty fortunate to get a lot of those kids money. The other neat thing about staying with GRASP, I know the community college has the navigators that um, help you go from high school to college. Um, we also help you with financial success um, going from high school to college because we have, once you're a member of our GRASP community, um, you are eligible for scholarships all the way through your senior year in college. We have a success program that helps coordinate uh, you 
We have um, emails, text messages, private meetings, and also give scholarships to kids in their other years if they're not getting enough um, aid from the schools, we can uh, send money that way as well, um, as much as seven or $8,000. The Pell Grant uh, for last year was uh, $6,345. And um, the way you get a Pell Grant, it's based on your um, family's income from the previous year. Um, the ages of your parents, it's based on how many uh, people are in the family. Um, it is also on your savings and things like that. And they come up with this magical number that's called the expected family contribution. And whether you go to a two-year school, a trade school, or a four-year school, that expected family contrib contribution is basically the same amount and then with scholarships and government aid and with um, loans, they put together a package to help you meet the college needs. So I help you with navigating that whole process. Um, we also um, will help with um, any questions that you have. I'm planning on meeting with students um, on Tuesdays on a regular basis, but my phone number and my email, you can um, approach me any day of, of the week. I like um, Ms. Bonville, what you said, I can respond better between eight and five, but I've been doing this for a long time and I would like to help as many students as I can meet their goals and um, get to a place where they're feeling comfortable with this whole process. And, the other things that you may want me to talk about, um, I see on there that you want uh, SATs and college boards and things like that. Um, I can also uh, help you with navigating that, where to get college prep, SAT prep. Um, you know, just because I was the counselor in the past, um, I was able to help kids navigate some of those situations as well. Are there any questions? Okay. Ms. Fonville, do you have things that you want to add? I'll ask one question. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, um, go ahead. <laughs> no, we're here please. for it. Please do. Um, so in 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 your experience, would you say you would recommend kids to do the Two two plan and go to a community college first. Absolutely. Yes. In today's time and today, uh, especially with all this virtual learning right now, um, you know that what you're signing up for, as far as the amount of credits um, and uh, the cost of the uh, course per credit, and uh, why pay? You know three times the amount for that credit at a four-year school than a two-year school. Um, so it's a really good way. And if a person gets a Pell Grant, a full Pell Grant of uh, $6,300, that pays for most of it all pays. the expenses plus I the left over. Go yeah, ahead. I can an I can answer that. So um, it's $5,000. Um, um, a year basically um, at um, RCC versus uh, at least $25,000 a year at a four year school. So if you do get full Pell Grant, um, it will pretty much cover all your tuition and uh, most of your um, textbooks, if not all of them, because a lot of them are um, online now, the textbooks are. So um, th that, is, that is a huge reason to start at the community college, but also um, if you have not talked to any families where students have gone straight to the four-year schools, um, you know, the smaller classroom size, um, typically at tech or some of those places you're going to have in the freshman classes, a hundred students in, you know, in the auditorium. So it really is up, up to the student and their personality and, um, and what, um, you know, I mean, my son, I knew needed to go to the community college. It was just no, no ifs, ands, and buts about it. 
my daughter was ready. I hoped she would go to community college. She went to Mary Washington and flourished. She was fine. Um, but, um, but the money is the big thing. It will save you a ton of money. So you can almost go for free, even without Pell Grant, with the scholarships, you usually you can find enough scholarships to go for free to the community college. And there's a tuition grant, they call it the um, BTEG, the Virginia Tuition Assistance Grant, which is also free to every student, and that is not need-based. No, and that's for private colleges, for um, the tuition assistance grant is for a four-year private school. So that is something that can add to it. And, but what we do with the um, There is families, a transfer grant too, though. Right, oh yeah, and the transfer grant is um, for a student who goes the two plus two, and they have a lot of guaranteed admissions and things like that. So there, that's a really good question. Um, I think financially, of course, it would be better. And of course, um, a lot of the, um, you know, politicians are talking about maybe making the community college um, uh, free um, for students in the future, but that's all up in the air, but there's, uh, many reasons to do that. Sometimes um, kids want to have, um, you know, be in sports and things like that. And um, that's a big reason why a lot of the kids say, oh, well, I want to play basketball or baseball or that kind of thing. But um, I'm just really concerned with the money situation these days um, that it's best to still have two years and save a bunch of money and be able to continue their education. So yes, to answer your question, I think Ms. McGinnis, I may be meeting with your daughter next week too. I think I sent her an email today about meeting with me as in a group. Um, okay, I'll speak to her. She's not here tonight. Yeah, yeah I she's sent at, her. She's at a church program, but uh, I'll definitely yeah. make sure I get with her and Make sure so I can answer, yeah, and I can answer a lot of questions um, I, um, to all of you at that point, too. Okay, thank and you. I also, yes, and I'll bring up, she did mention one little point that I didn't mention in my, in my presentation is that is the guaranteed admission agreements. So your um, 23 community colleges do have guaranteed admission agreements with all the public and private schools. And basically the minimum requirement is uh, a certain GPA. And if you go to Rappahannock, www.rappahannock.edu and you put slash GAA, you can see all the guaranteed admission agreements that we have. And then unfortunately they can't be used coming out of high school with associate degree. But uh, if you have at least 15 credits, so the minimum is 15 credits, then you can commit. Um, so if you, you know, if you don't get, Hopefully you'll decide to come to RCC, but we're, we're fine with being a backup. So if you don't get any school of choice, you can come to RCC and use that guaranteed admission agreement. We, they pretty much all say this, uh, something very similar. You earn your associate degree and then it's a minimum GPA. Now the GPA is different by university. Um, and some of the other schools has some other little nuances, but for the most part, that's, that's, um, and that guarantees your spot in that, in that school. Um, now, there are some GAAs to uh, the School of Nursing or the School of Engineering, but most part the GAAs are to the college itself and you still have to um, apply to the School of whatever, business, nursing, or so forth. Um, so, but that is another advantage of the community colleges that you can use the guaranteed admission agreements um, if you have your heart set or the student has their heart set on a certain, certain college that they want to go to. Okay. Awesome. Are there any questions? Any other questions? Yeah, this is uh, Bob Quayle. Uh, I was wondering if you are aware of any programs that pertain to 20-year uh, retired veterans of the military and how that would uh, aid in scholarships and things like that. I know in Michigan they offer free ride to state schools for children of retired veterans. I was wondering if there's anything like that in Virginia. Um, I know there's our military scholarships, um, and I have a whole list of them that I could forward. Um, what age uh, are you, you talking about as far as the student? Uh, I have a senior, and I also have a, uh, a ninth grade. Awesome. Eighth grade, sorry. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I would definitely like to work with you individually, especially with the senior, and we can go over that information. Um, and, you know, they also have uh, what's called, you know, as far as out of state um, tuition is waived for you for the um, places that you were actually in training where you signed up and where, you know, are, if you, are you retired military now? Yes. Okay. So um, there are uh, lots of different options for you for, you know, um, acceptance um, and helping with the tuition if you're in the military. So I would definitely want to uh, speak with you individually. Okay. That's great. Um, the way to get in touch with me, um, I can put on this Zoom chat over here. Yeah, I'm that? also I'm also making a slide that everyone can copy to. Okay. But yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you putting Miss Reynolds' information on there? You know it. Thank you. You're welcome. So Are I you think about NHS. What's that? Have you heard anything from Miss Reynolds about national? Oh, Congress? oh yeah. Duh. Let me say that really quick. And after that. Um, we did have an opportunity for a speaker to join us. Um, really quick, Honor Society. Um, Ms. Reynolds said that invitations were sent based off of your semester one grades from 2019-2020 school year. And an additional set of invitations is going out um, in March of 2021 and it's going to be based off of the current semester we're in now. The GPA requirement is a 3.75 upon um, application, and there will be a sponsor meeting next week. The decision in acceptances should be announced before the end of semester one. So she said to look out for that, okay? Do you think that that would come in the mail or over email or now, how it's being announced? I am not 100% sure, but you can more than likely count on an email um, followed by a uh, snail mail. Okay. And her email address, I'll drop it in the chat. Um, so as I do that, I want to open the floor. We have Mrs. Karen Camlin from Chesapeake Bay Governor School, and she'll just uh, introduce herself and share a little bit more about um, Governor School. We touched on the curriculum. We had a testimonial from uh, Bella Jones and um, a little bit about just what it's like being there. So take it away, Ms. Camlin. I am so sorry I couldn't find my button to speak. I'm so happy that I made it and I'm so happy that you got to hear Bella because I think Bella probably did a really good job of letting you know what is offered at Chesapeake Bay Governor School. Um, I will give you my perspective and what we do at our school in order to qualify and get into the program. Um, this conversation is probably best for eighth and ninth graders because um, students start in 10th grade and go through their senior year. So we have only two spots. So those students that get in usually stick with it those whole three years. So we usually do not have anyone after 10th grade getting in. Um, and what happens is I look in ninth grade at right around December um, at ninth grade students at GPAs. So I pull all the kids that have a 3.0 or higher and then I look at the math courses that, that students have taken. So if students have taken Algebra 1, maybe in the first semester and they're on track for taking geometry the second semester, or some kids have even taken Algebra 2, um, I look at those students. I send out information to parents and students, inviting to come, them to come to an informational session um, in December, so that's going to be here before you know it, and I'm not even sure. I tried to see who was here by the names, but I'm not sure how many eighth and ninth graders are here, but that'll be here before you know it. So you would come in for an informational session, and I'd give you um, probably some of the same information that Bella has given you about the program. Um, and then I give you uh, about two weeks to fill out the application and decide if you want to participate. 
we come back after Christmas break, after the holidays, and um, I give the MAP assessment, which is a math assessment. And um, students, you know, that, that's a big predictor of who's going to um, get into the program, knowing that we only have two slots available. So I give the math assessment and I also do a writing assessment. Um, from there we, we um, put together a rubric or we have a rubric. We put together all the scores and we pick the top two kids with the highest scores and we invite them to participate in the program. Um, not knowing what Bella has said, um, is there any questions or anything that you need to ask me? Does anyone have any questions for me? Nope, I don't, I don't have any more questions. I think she answered everything earlier for me. Ms. That's what I thought. I think Bella probably did a really nice job of doing that. And I probably did it not as good telling you what needs to happen, but I will certainly, are there, Ms. Fonville, how many eighth and ninth graders do we have right now participating in this meeting? Uh, so far, two. Okay, alrighty. So, um, I and, really, I can, I, and I can connect you to some that might have responded. Right, and you. like I said, I will go through within the next um, month and look at GPAs and I will look at coursework already. And so, you know, those are the students that I will invite to attend the meeting because obviously they need certain coursework and, you know, a certain GPA to even qualify for the program. Um, and I know you've already talked about the dual enrollment portion of, uh, you know, for kids, Chesapeake Bay does offer dual enrollment for the students. Um, so that's a really nice thing as well. Um, and, and that comes through RCC as well. Um, but that's all I have to say. And if anyone has any questions, I, I do better with answering questions than talking. So if anyone has questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Okay, we've had the quietest group and I just thank everyone that has pre presented this evening. I did want to do a quick roll for um, data and follow up. Um, so and when I call your username in the chat, if you can tell me what grade you're representing, that will definitely help me a lot. Um, Ms. McGinnis, Jaden is a sophomore? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, we have Jessica's iPhone. Can you tell me what grade you are in, dear, or representing? Jessica's iPhone. Hey, Jessica's iPhone. Okay. Um, I'll see if I can check that for you. Oh, they put it in the chat. Oh, excellent. Eighth, great. See, Bella, you're the bomb. Um, let's see, Brittany Walker. Brittany Walker, if you can share what grade your child is in. Um, and then, uh, Mr. Quayle, you have McKinsey and Felicity. They are 12th and 8th? That's correct. I also have a 6th grader, but that'll be next meeting. Okay. And who else do we have? I believe that's it. Brittany Walker. Uh, Brittany Walker, hopefully, if you can hear me by the end of the call, please share what grade level your student is in. That would be so very helpful. Um, okay, so I do want to open it up 
to general questions. If there's something that you feel fuzzy or hazy over, I can go over it again. I feel like we covered a lot of helpful information and it's perfectly fine with me if we end early. But um, I, I just really appreciate our speakers for giving this information um, to you all. Thank you all for um, coming out, you know, virtually and getting this helpful information these helpful tips on making high school better for your your family um you know students they have the opportunity to learn wherever they are they can you know be at home they can be you know outside uh we i'm just gr grateful for this to keep you guys encouraged keep connected and um you know offer insight you know, we all have the, the goal is still the same. We want to make sure you graduate and achieve the diploma that you want, whether it's standard or advanced. We want to make sure you're able to either enroll, enlist, or get employed. Um, other than that, that you know, that's it. I'm going to put the slide up here real quickly for their contact information. And we have two winners. I have two door prizes. Y'all know how I am with my door prizes. Um, control F5. Control F5. Uh, so make that bigger. There we go. All right. So those are the email addresses of our speakers and the uh, information that was given today. And our winners are the first parent that joined the Zoom session, and that's Mr. Bob Quayle. He is a recipient, he and um, our other winner are recipients of these two gifts. And our second recipient is Ms. McGinnis for asking the most questions. So congratulations to Mr. Quayle and Ms. McGinnis. You guys are winners of 2021 calendars. Can y'all see this? Yes, 2021 calendars. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, with everybody being at home, I'm sure that, you know, you can often get a little love, you know, so you've got that. We have a mask courtesy of Alzheimer's Awareness. Miss Judy Long was collecting funds for Alzheimer's Awareness this month. And gratitude you know be thankful hopefully this is something we can add to your decor at home <laughs> make that home learning that much more beautiful uh so i like i said i thank you all for your time i thank you all for your questions and wanting to learn more information about uh, colonial beach high school and what it is i do at, in the, the counseling office uh, i miss you all I, you know, I cherish this entire community. I hope to make us that much more better. If there's certain feedback and change you wish to see, email and phone call away. Um, so yeah, one one Colonial Beach hashtag Drifter Pride. Make sure you post your Throwback Thursday picture tomorrow. Um, if we have juniors and seniors on this call, it's not too late to get community service hours for today if you post in pink or post in purple on instagram or send an email to me you'll get an hour of community service don't feel like putting on anything pink or purple donate every five every five dollars is one community service hour if you donate to the american cancer society or the national coalition against or to end domestic violence um we're wrapping up virtual spirit week with black and gold day on friday so i hope to see your drifter pride your black and gold on friday we had a wonderful uh red ribbon week pick up thank you all for your thoughts and your concerns for my family um unfortunately losing our patriarch my pop pop um so i thank everyone for keeping us in your thoughts as we go through this time of mourning um uh, and understanding why i had to reschedule red ribbon week pick up to yesterday if you still want to pick up your red ribbon and get that hour of community service or those five improvement points on your lowest assignment grade just send me a text message um my text message is on the parent night my phone number is on the parent night flyer um, and it's also in my email signature. 
Um, and yesterday, oh, Monday was also Motivational Monday. You can still post a quote. I'd love to see it. Um, my motivational quote was, be the change you wish to see in the world by civil rights activist Mahatma Gandhi. Um, other than that, you know, stay safe stay you know stay active and alert in all of your zoom sessions turning your work on time increase the level of, of alarm so you're you know awake um but you know just always reach out the support is here we've got support from everywhere you can think of college career military we're we're here for you okay thank you thank you all everyone all the speakers tonight thank you so much for sharing Thank You're you. so welcome. Thank you. All right. So I'll be sending out follow up emails. If you um, have any questions, this recording will be made available very soon. Going to be talking with our tech department to make sure it's nice and fancy. Um, other than that, I wish everyone a wonderful Wednesday night and I'll see y'all on the internet. Okay. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, Yo. I was hoping that I might be able to have a second to ask you a question. I'm with it. Hold on. Hoping that Mr. Williams is.